Well, welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad you joined us this evening. Tonight we're having authentic Cajun filet gumbo. And I say Cajun gumbo because it's different than Creole gumbo. And we'll talk about that. So here is your ingredient list. Please pause, write these down. And hey, you know, we love it when you like our videos, give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. They might like it too. So the reason I say authentic, and I can say that because every household has their own gumbo recipe in gumbo country. We're going to start out with chicken. I've dried it off. I've sprinkled it with salt and paprika, and we're going to brown this. And Cajun gumbo generally has chicken and andouille sausage, uh, maybe ham, and not much, if any, seafood. As usual, I'm going to start in cast iron, and I've measured out a cup of sunflower oil. Do not use olive oil. Do not use butter. Uh, the cooking process is just not right for them. Just use a good vegetable oil. And I'm just going to brown this chicken. I'm not going to cook it done. Uh, medium hot pan. Not quite there yet, but I'll get there. And we want to get that good toasty brown uh, flavor on these. And this is an important step because we want to render the fat out of the chicken and we want to create a wonderful fond to make uh, our roux. Uh, and back to Creole. Creole gumbo generally has tomatoes in it also, but this dish is not going to have any tomatoes. You can add some if you want, uh, but the difference in Cajun and Creole gumbo is generally the tomatoes and the seafood. What they have in common is a nice dark roux, and I'm going to show you how we make that nice dark roux. So I'm going to go about three minutes on each side uh, and, and get them a little bit crunchy. And we're rendering off that lovely fat, and you can see the paprika is also bringing a nice color to this oil. If you really want an in-depth discussion of the difference between uh, Cajun and Creole styles, I suggest you look at a couple of videos from Paul Prudhomme. See that nice fat that we're getting rendered in there? But he explains it well. Basically, Cajun food is country food, and Creole food is city food. So when this gets nice and brown, I'm going to take it out of the pan and set it aside while I'm doing while other things are cooking, I will cut it up into little bitty chunks to complete cooking later. And what I've created here is some nice fond and some nice chicken fat for our roux. And you know, I really cannot overemphasize how important the roux is to the dish. It's, it's what really makes it gumbo. And I, I have a metal whisk here. I usually use a silicone whisk, but I'm using metal just to make sure I get all that nice fond off and I have a cup of flour. I'm using self-rising flour as usual. It has salt in it. If you use all-purpose flour you'll just salt more later. And I'm making this roux a little differently than you've seen me make roux before. I'm cooking the flour in and I'm going to add the oil later. I'm, I'm browning the flour just a tiny bit and then I will add as much oil as I need to get a very liquid roux. And it's going to end up being about a cup total, including the chicken fat. But instead of the precise measurements I usually use when I'm making a roux, my goal here is to have enough oil in here so that I can toast the flour and have it turn a nice dark chocolate color without scorching it. So I probably have a little bit more oil than I usually would have. But at this step, you want to make sure that you stir it all in and get out any flour lumps uh, and have a nice medium thin roux. Because this roux is going to cook somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes. And that's something I'll tell you about gumbo. Don't start it if you don't have plenty of time. It really does take a long time uh, and it uh, takes a lot of attention. So you see the consistency we have there uh, and, and that's okay. It's pretty thin, but it's okay. So I've just pulled my stool right up here to the stove. I'm here for the duration. I'm going to stir this 
not constantly, but pretty often. I've got my heat on medium low. See these little pieces of fond? That's little pieces of chicken that have pulled off. We're doing a little time lapse here so you can see the process. And you know, I tell you about the chicken pieces because every time I make a video with little pieces of fond, somebody says, ew, I don't like those little dark things. You should pull them out. Well, I went to extra trouble to get them, so I'm not pulling them out. So see the color we're getting? We're going for the color of chocolate. I've got a quart of chicken broth here. I'm gonna add it slowly. And, and just don't do that too soon. Wait until you get that chocolate color. Uh, this took 35 minutes. Uh, and as I pour the chicken broth in, I want you to see the wonderful, deep, rich color. And that is important for gumbo. Anything less, and it's not really gumbo. I'm only adding one quart of the chicken broth right now. We'll add the other quart later. And if we were making Creole gumbo, we would add a quart of tomatoes instead uh, later on when the actual gumbo is cooking. So that's the whole quart of broth. And uh, just something to take note of, I'll show you how thin this is. When you cook a roux that long, uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, it loses its ability to thicken. This, this will not get as thick as gravy with these same proportions. So in gumbo, the roux is for flavor, and we'll use other methods for thickening it a little later on. We'll use okra and filet powder. I'm gonna set this to the side, take the next step. So this is my five quart Dutch oven. I've got a little oil in the bottom. This is some andouille sausage. Nice and spicy, little hot, not very hot. I don't do really hot. And we're gonna brown this sausage. Uh, and don't use anything less than a five quart Dutch oven and it'll be really full. Let the sausage sizzle a little and then add the Trinity, which is onions, peppers, and celery. Uh, and I think the Trinity is only used in New Orleans cooking. I don't know of anywhere else it's used. Uh, that's a cup of onion, half a cup of celery, half a cup of bell pepper. And I'm using red bell pepper, but usually it's green. I just think the red bell pepper is beautiful. So stir that around. We're going to put a little salt on it so that it will weep. Uh, and we're just going to cook this until the vegetables soften. And not a whole lot of salt right now, just a little. Uh, my broth is never salted, so I'll check it later for salt. And red pepper flakes, and you can add black pepper too if you like, but I really think you need red pepper flakes. Adding my chicken back in now in little bitty chunks. Add what spices you like. You can use a bay leaf, you can use some Creole seasoning, you can use some hot sauce, you can use hot peppers. I think the andouille sausage just brings all the wonderful flavor. Uh, some people like it hot. You know, I don't necessarily like to kick it up a notch. I'm not real happy with anything that hides the flavor. So I'm putting in uh, my two cloves of garlic chopped pretty fine. And we're gonna stir it all around now. And add back in our wonderful roux. And I just think this stuff is gorgeous. And, and you know, the smell uh, that it has is, is different than gravy. You can look at this and it looks like gravy to you. It's not gravy. I don't even know what you call it, uh, but it's just the richest flavor uh, you could ever want. And we have one more quart of the turkey broth. This is turkey broth, not chicken broth. This is my bone broth that I made. We add that in and my pan looks like it's getting really, really full but I'll show you, I'm not gonna overflow. Turning my heat down low, I'm gonna put a lid on the pot. I'm gonna set my timer for two hours. I will have to check in about every 20 minutes. And remember, I warned you, don't start this if you're in a hurry. This is gonna take some time and there's gonna be active cooking time. So this is 20 minutes later. From the andouille sausage, the chicken, and the extra oil we had in the broth, fat will start to rise to the top and you really don't want that fat in there it's going to mask the flavor and it's it's just fat we want to get rid of it so about every 20 minutes until it's pretty much gone i'm going to open the pot and i'm going to skim the fat off 
and from this pot I'm going to get about two cups of fat skimmed off and I skimmed three times until it got to the point where we didn't have a layer of oil floating on top what we had was just the wonderful veggies and meat and the smells amazing so I've still got about another hour for it to cook uh, it needs to cook slowly with the lid so now we're going to add our okra, and I only have a cup of okra here. Usually I would add two cups, but my okra's just started bearing, so I only had a cup. And the okra is a thickening agent, and, and you know gumbo is actually a, a variation of the word combo, which means okra. Uh, and we're going to let that cook about 20 minutes. And hang in there, we are coming to the end. I want you to see how thick it's gotten and I'm gonna add a little shrimp you don't have to add shrimp as I said with Cajun gumbo seafood is optional um, but you want to put the seafood in at the very end it only needs to cook two or three minutes we're gonna give this a little taste and you know I have to say you know how I cut the sound out when I tasted this I just went nuts. This tastes so wonderful. Uh, it's worth the three hours of preparation. Uh, we're going to add, we want to thicken a little bit more. This is filet powder, and normally if you have okra, you don't need filet powder. They're both thickeners, but I didn't have much okra. So I'm adding about a half teaspoonful, maybe a little bit more, uh, of filet powder. It's also a thickening agent. It's ground up sassafras root. It also brings some really great flavor. So we are about done here. Just let it come back to a simmer. That gives the shrimp about three minutes and then turn it off. This is just beautiful and smells great. I'm gonna plate this up now and show you what we got. So you probably want to serve this in a big bowl with a nice scoop of rice. I'm just using plain white rice. You can use any rice you like. And, and I have to tell you, gumbo doesn't taste like anything else. It has a unique flavor. You can make soups and stews all you want to. And you know I love a really good soup or a nice rich beef stew. But nothing tastes like gumbo. This combination of flavors... And I don't mean the seafood, the combination of the sausage and the chocolate roux uh, and the okra, there's nothing like gumbo. And I don't make it often because, boy, it takes some time and it takes some care. Uh, but it's worth it when I do. This is something I fix for friends that I really, really care about uh, because you can put your love into cooking it. So thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Please try this gumbo. I promise you'll love it. Now my friends are waiting, so we're going to eat. And there's just nothing better than sharing good food with people you love.